What's up everyone? Dr. Jacob Wilson here, the Muscle PhD. Today we're gonna have a really good question. And surprisingly, a very controversial question today, which is how much or how high should my meal frequency be to optimize muscle mass, right? Okay, so here's the thing to understand, right? Every time I eat a meal, if the meal is optimized in protein, I should get an anabolic response, okay? So we're gonna start with that and we're gonna work our way backwards because you start with the positives and then I'm gonna bring out, well, here's the potential negatives. The positives are gains, right, with a Z, okay? You're trying to make serious gains. You're in here, you're trying to, you're busting your ass in the gym every single day, maybe one, twice a day, maybe six days a week, maybe seven days a week, right? You're giving it your all and you wanna know how many meals a day should I eat, okay? It's a great question. <clears throat> First thing to understand is, every, again, every time you eat a meal, you maximize protein synthesis if you've consumed probably 30 to 50 grams of protein. I'm assuming that's what you're eating in a meal, okay? Now, after that, we need to know is how long does that meal last? How long does protein synthesis last? Well, my brother did a time course. He looked at how long protein synthesis lasts. Turns out that it lasts about three hours, right? Um, or 180 minutes, and then after that, you're back down to baseline, okay? So how do we overcome that? Well, one way is to eat another meal, um, you know, or another way is to have branched chain amino acids, okay? So we're really talking about is feedings here. Now, one thing to understand is you eat a whole meal, protein is still elevated three hours later, but the signal's off. So what I really recommend is having essential amino acids or branched chain amino acids to kind of pro spike protein synthesis again, and then an hour or two hours later have another meal. So basically, you ate two hours later, you have uh, amino acids or you have whey protein as a shake, and then two hours after that, you're having another meal. So your whole meals are maybe separated by four meals, and in between those meals, maybe you're having amino acids or a small whey protein shake. So if you do that throughout the day, you're probably having four to six meals a day. And in between those meals, you're essentially having essential amino acids or branched chain amino acids or whey protein, okay? Now, that's how you optimize muscle size. And I do think it's a way to optimize muscle size. The problem is that there's a benefit to fasting. There is a benefit to fasting, okay? And that's where things like intermittent fasting come in because basically on intermittent fasting, it's a way where I lower my meal frequency to increase insulin sensitivity, to increase vascularity, to increase the health of the cell. Now you might be a bodybuilder and going like, I don't care about health. The only thing I care about is gains with a Z, right? Okay, well, think about this for a second here. You had a long career. Muscle takes years to build. Health is important for bodybuilding. And so what I would say is that um, you need to cycle your meal frequency because if I have meal frequency that's high all the time, I'm gonna start to become insulin resistant. My cells need to get cleaned out. And eventually, that six, seven meals a day that was beneficial before stops being beneficial because now I'm insulin resistant. And that's a problem. So what I recommend is cycling your meal frequency, okay? And you can basically use something like intermittent fasting to do that where basically you are only eating eight to nine hours a day. And you do that may maybe two days a week during your gain phase, but five days a week during your cut phase. And during your cut phase, you're having high meal frequency two days a week. During your gain phase, you're having high meal frequency four to five days a week. But two days a week, three days a week, you're still cleaning out the cell, maintaining insulin sensitivity. Now, going back, backpedaling, what's the least amount of meals I can do and still make gains? On intermittent fasting, I think eating in an eight to nine hour window where you're eating two to three meals a day, that's the farthest you can push it. Because as soon as you push it to four hour feeding period a day, I would not do that more on once a week because you'll start to lose muscle and you definitely won't be making gains. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. I'll see you next time. Doc, how do you spell gains? 
G A I N Z. <laughs>